The film begins with a man named Cairo, walking around a Buenos Aires neighborhood. He is a thug, and when he sees a car he wants, he breaks into it. He enters the car, and steals the stereo. He finds a pair of Ray-Bans, in the luggage locker, and steals them. He's still not satisfied with the car's assault, so he clenches his butt cheeks and forces a fart. He eventually feels that his work is finished, so he leaves. But sadly, the door does not open. He tries the remaining three doors, but none of them open. He's forced to take a seat, in the rear seat, where he tries to unlock the trunk. When he is unable to do so, he becomes panicked, and furiously tries to break the car window, but fails. The skillful thug, refuses to give up, and demolishes the car doors inside. He tries to open the door, by squeezing his hand inside, but ends up injuring himself. He starts to bleed, but the car door stays shut. Before we continue the movie, welcome back to Mini Movies. This is a movie, 4x4 four four feet, released in 2019. Let's continue. Cairo pulls out his revolver, and fires a shot at the front glass after everything else fails, but the bullet bounces off and injures his thighs, making him cry in extreme pain. He removes his shirt, and wraps it around the wound which was heavily bleeding. Cairo had been attempting to avoid being seen up until now, but after shooting himself in the leg, he tries to attract the attention of someone on the outside, to help him in getting out of the car, even if it means going to jail. Fortunately, a woman appears outside the car, and starts applying makeup through the car window. Cairo tries to seek her help, but it appears, that the woman outside the car is clueless, to Cairo's presence inside. He yells at her, but she ignores him and walks away. Cairo tries to call his wife, but the phone's battery runs out, before he can finish the call. Cairo falls asleep after a few hours. The next morning, he is extremely thirsty. He was out of water and had no choice, but to lick the fog from the window, out of despair. He then takes the car stereo out of his bag, and replaces it, so that he may listen to the radio. His favorite music starts playing on the radio, and he loses himself in it, forgetting about his difficulties for a little while. Despite the fact, that the song is about hooking up in the car, and is a dirty song, it perfectly mirrors Cairo's position. It mentions hazy windows, tilted seats, and doing it all night. The song inspires him, to try opening the door again, and he starts hitting the door, with a tool on repeat. The phone begins to ring through the car's stereo. Cairo answers the phone, and a man on the other end speaks. Dr. Enrique Ferrari introduces himself, and welcomes Cairo into the car. Enrique goes on to say, that he owns the SUV, and has been robbed 28 times in his life. He goes on to say, that Cairo is the 29th thief to attempt, to steal from him. Cairo is furious by the confession, and demands his release, but Enrique tells him to shut up and listen. Enrique then goes on to say, that he calls his car, 4x4, which has an alert system, that is linked to his phone, and allows him to lock all of the car's doors. The car is bulletproof, and cannot be moved from within, due to a control system. It is also soundproof. Aside from that, all of the glass is polarized, including the front windshield. The gas tank, which can contain 120 liters of fuel, is currently full, and is the only thing that isn't bulletproof. Enrique warns him, that a full gas tank is a dangerous bomb, and that if he does anything stupid, the car can also explode. Enrique goes on to say, that he is a widower, who was born in Quilmes 60 years ago, as Cairo listens in disbelief. He had a typical childhood, from a middle-class family at the time. His house's doors were never locked. Enrique says, that his current life is so stressful, that he misses his childhood life. He asked Cairo, what he would do if his son was caught stealing. Cairo, on the other hand, has had enough, and threatens to report Enrique to the police. Cairo orders Enrique to release him, so that he can murder him, and his entire family. The phone, however, hangs up on Cairo, before he can finish. Enrique then turns on the air conditioner, and adjusts the temperature to the lowest setting, in order to torture the thief. Cairo repeatedly tries to turn off the air conditioner, and is left with no choice, but to remove his shirt from his wound and wear it. To stop the bleeding in his leg, he tears a piece of his jeans, and wraps it around the wound. Enrique calls him again after torturing for an hour, and asks him what he would do, if he caught his son trying to steal. Cairo responds to the question, but it's not enough for Enrique. Cairo begs him to stop, telling that he has learned his lesson, but Enrique doesn't listen, and tells Cairo about another incident. He reveals, that two men broke into his daughter's home last December, while she was parking her car. 
Enrique says that he had prepared his daughter for such situations. She never makes eye contact and always has money ready to hand out. However, the training wasn't enough, and the robbers held Enrique's grandsons hostage for three hours. Cairo, on the other hand, is uninterested in Enrique's stories and asks him what kind of doctor deprives an injured person of water. Before hanging up, Enrique compliments him on the question and asks him to guess what kind of doctor he is. Suddenly a police car arrives and stops in front of the SUV. Cairo is filled with hope once more, and he attempts to attract the attention of the police officer, but the officer instead issues a ticket to the SUV and leaves. Please like and subscribe to support us. Several hours later, Enrique calls again and asks Cairo for his full name and ID number in exchange for water. After Cairo complies, Enrique leads him to the water in the laundry pipeline in the back. The water is light blue in color, but the thirsty Cairo couldn't care less, and gulps down the water, breathing a sigh of relief. However, Cairo is still hungry and without food, so he is almost forced to eat one insect that has found its way into the car. Later, Cairo checks his wound and discovers that it is turning yellow and that he also has a fever. Enrique decides to give him a break and turns on the air conditioning for Cairo to cool down, disclosing that he is also sick. Enrique is dying of cancer, and his doctors have given him a year to live. Cairo takes off his clothes and passes out, as Enrique continues to talk. Cairo's skin turned yellow as well. Later, Cairo searches the car manual for a way out, but ends up eating its page, out of desperation and frustration. After a while, Cairo reaches his control limit and pisses in a container, which he eventually drinks, to quench his thirst. Hope starts to build up for Cairo when a thief tries to break into the SUV. The thief, however, is spotted by a passerby, beats him up, and hands him over to the police. As night falls, thirst and hunger turns him into a philosopher. He observes how a small percentage of the population have so many things that must be distributed so that everyone can enjoy them. He goes on to say that the world is full of poor people who are subjected to laws made by rich people for rich people. Cairo claims he will not obey them, even if they shoot him, that's why, like his father and grandfather, he became a thief. Enrique calls him again the next day, and reads him the newspaper. Enrique says he's in a good mood, so he leads him to a chocolate bar, hidden behind the brakes. Cairo repeatedly hits on one of the doors, after spending the entire day, resting and observing the people in the neighborhood. He eventually manages to strip the door down, to its metal core from the inside, making a small hole in the door, that opens to the outside. He screams through the tiny hole, in an attempt to get someone's attention, but fails. Later, Enrique calls and says, he has contacted Cairo's family. Hearing his family's name, Cairo breaks down, and warns Enrique not to harm them. He then asks, tearfully, what he did to deserve this. Enrique, on the other hand, does not stop, and pulls out Cairo's criminal record, revealing that, Cairo has previously killed someone, but he denies killing anyone. Enrique has receipts, and reveals that Cairo broke into the Salerno brothers' home, in Baracas to rob them, but when they tried to fight back, Cairo shot them with his gun. Enrique also mentions an old bus driver, who Cairo severely abused. However, Cairo refuses to accept responsibility, and blames the driver, for not allowing him to rob the passengers. He admits he made mistakes, and that he has already paid for them. Later, Cairo charges his phone with solar power, and attempts to call his wife, but the call is routed to voicemail. After crying his eyes out, he confesses everything to his wife, and apologizes for messing up again, in the voicemail. Cairo plays around with the car's start button, and manages to get it to turn on. It appears, that it can only be started without a key, after a certain number of presses. He fastens his seatbelt, and shifts into reverse. However, the gear becomes stuck in reverse mode, forcing him to drive in reverse. To get people's attention, he speeds the car, and crashes it into a pole. Fortunately, the airbag installs on time, and he is not injured. Cairo is finally able to escape, by kicking down the damaged rear window. He is in great pain, but he drags himself to a nearby gas station eatery, and helps himself to some food. As he enjoys every bite of his meal, the manager of the restaurant orders him, to pay for the meal and leave immediately. This angers Cairo, who shoots the manager. He then awakens from his sleep, realizing, that he had been dreaming, and that he is still trapped in the car. Enrique calls again, and Cairo threatens to kill himself, but he is unsuccessful. To scare Enrique, 
Cairo places his gun to his mouth, and pulls the trigger, but the gun jams. Enrique chuckles at the thief's situation, and tells him, to look in front of the car. Finally exposing himself, Enrique joins him in the car. Cairo is exhausted to the ultimate level, so he lacks the energy to run away. Enrique attends to Cairo's wound, before becoming busy with a work call, while Cairo appears to fall asleep. Cairo tries to shoot the insane doctor, but fails and jumps out of the car. He is finally free, and fires a warning shot into the air. Enrique, on the other hand, approaches him again, and tries to drag him back to the SUV. When a policewoman sees the two, she tells the doctor, to put down his gun. People, reporters, and police, surround the spot for two hours, but Enrique refuses to let Cairo leave, claiming he is the thief's victim. When everything else fails, the cops bring retired negotiator Julio Amadio, who asks the doctor what he wants. Enrique, goes on to list a number of problems, that he faces on a daily basis, that the government ignores, because at the very least, no one was injured. Enrique claims, that he had to avoid 2,000 dog poops on the street while walking to work, because dog owners do not clean up after their pets, if nobody is looking. The public agrees with Enrique, and supports him. Julio refuses to give up, and continues to speak with Enrique, until he is convinced to let Cairo go. Julio asks Enrique to surrender after the police arrest Cairo, but he gets in his SUV, after attaching a timer on top of his car. Julio thinks it's a bomb, and tells everyone to back off. The SUV explodes, killing Enrique, but sparking a fire, in the hearts of all commoners. Which character did you like most? That was all from the video, I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this, and hit the like button to help us out. Also, don't forget to leave a comment, if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.